Hey ladies and gents, it's Sem back, and we're doing the Iconic Plains, uh, probably, and I'm being honest here, probably the most iconic American plane of World War II, uh, which is not the P-51, uh, but the P-40. I mean, not just <laughs> for the fact of, of what it was and what it did, uh, uh, but you know, you have some of the great movies uh, if you've never watched Flying Tigers with John Wayne or uh, John Belushi in 1941, if you've never seen the movie 1941, go get it. Great comedy. Uh, Tora, Tora, Tora. Um, yeah, these uh, iconic uh, movies that this plane was featured in. Uh, you know, and I'm just talking about just, you know, uh, not to actually even do anything to do with the war, but just, you know, the, the movies and books and stories and that stuff. Um, and there, there's a lot of myth and uh, uh, about this aircraft uh, that are uh, not necessarily true, uh, but um, some of it was, some of it wasn't. Uh, but for its most part, this aircraft produced 200 aces uh, for an aircraft that was considered inferior to uh, just about everything. Um, uh, 200 aces, 20 double aces. Uh, from seven different countries, it was flown by 24 different countries during World War II and after World War II. Um, uh, and, and in the words of a, one of the uh, uh, Australian pilots, it was it was a war horse. Uh, this thing, uh, like he said, you could get into trouble and it, you, it, it would take you home uh, every time. Uh, so it first flew in 1938. Uh, it was the continuation of the P-36. Uh, and replacing the radial engine uh, with, of course, an inline engine. Uh, the military, the U.S. Air Force, I should say, uh, were of co was, of course, interested, as well as the Royal Air Force. Um, now, there is a couple of distinctions here. We talk about the War Hawk versus the Tomahawk and the Kitty Hawk. The War Hawk was the United States designation for this aircraft. The Tomahawk and the Kitty Hawk was, was the uh, Great Britain's designation for this aircraft. Um, and the Soviet Union also used uh, the, the terms Kitty Hawk and Tomahawk. Uh, the War Hawk was always used by the United States Air Force. Um, yeah, so, so the history of this plane is fascinating. You know, you read about uh, the uh, infamous Ellison engine and the single-stage uh, superchargers uh, and why that really uh, supposedly failed this aircraft. Um, it did not have a great climb, uh, a, a great rate of climb. Uh, it do, didn't do well at high altitudes, uh, and blah blah blah. Uh, however, this aircraft fought everywhere. It fought Europe, the deserts. Um, it fought in uh, Russia in the extreme cold. It was in Burma in the middle of the jungle. It was in Australia. Uh, it fought everywhere. At, at, at any time, it didn't require special uh, treatment, um, and none of that. It was just a solid aircraft, extremely durable, um, with its bulletproof glass armor plating. Uh, there was uh, uh, one of the Australian uh, aces flew his P-40 back after taking 100 rounds of 7.92 and five rounds of 20 millimeter cannons to it, uh, and still flew it home. Uh, there were similar stories out of Japan uh, of uh, Japanese aces uh, getting in behind this thing and emptying their entire um, magazine of machine gun and not being able to bring it down. That's how tough these planes were. Um, after doing, you know, and I did an extensive amount of reading about it from all kinds of different sources. Uh, at least in the European theater, uh, below 20,000 feet, it, it could handle, uh, in fact, it was considered superior to most of the BF-109s, uh, especially the Soviet versions where they would strip a lot of the weight out of this aircraft. Uh, it could outturn a BF-109 below 20,000 feet. Uh, of course, it never did have the altitude uh, that the BF-109 did, uh, but below 20, 15, 20,000 feet, uh, this can, can outturn a 109 um, which is amazing when you think about it. You always think this plane was never, a, you know, a bunch of a turner, but uh, it was quite capable. Uh, when they went to, in the Pacific Theater, of course, when they run into the uh, the Japanese Zeros, uh, 
you know, which was a different story, uh, this plane can still outturn a zero uh, at high speeds. Uh, low speeds, it cannot outturn a zero. Uh, however, it could uh, outclimb it, uh, it could outdive it, uh, it was faster. Um, you know, you and probably the most famous group uh, of American pilots during World War II were the Flying Tigers. Uh, and they were a group of Americans that volunteered, went to China to fight the Japanese. And they flew P-40s. Not only did they fly P-40s, they flew P-40s uh, that didn't have spare parts. I mean, these planes were put together with literally uh, bailing wire and gum. Uh, tires, yeah, whatever. They were salvaged off wrecked planes, uh, but they were able to just keep on going. And they racked up in, in less than a year a very impressive record of 297 kills over Japanese aircraft to four losses of P-40s. Um, and you start reading some of the uh, uh, stories from these pilots and stuff, and you realize that this aircraft racked up an incredibly impressive rate of um, uh, kill-to-death ratios. Uh, and the, the only time this aircraft really, and, and this comes from several different pilots interviewed, uh, was that the aircraft, uh, if you knew how to fly it, was extremely capable. If you didn't know how to fly it, you were fucked. Um, you know, and they, they said a lot of times the majority of the losses that were to P-40s or P-40 losses were due to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, very inexperienced pilots. Uh, but the vast majority of the pilots that flew the aircraft loved the aircraft. Uh, many of them considered it uh, uh, superior to most of the things they flew against, which is surprising because you never hear that. You always hear that the P-40 was just, you know, one of those kind of inferior aircraft. I mean, it flew in 1938. Uh, produced all the way through the war, uh, continuous upgrades. There's a, just a massive list of different variants of this aircraft. Um, it was used, you know, uh, from air superiority fighters to uh, the fighter bomber. Probably the fighter bomber is probably the uh, its role that it played uh, the greatest amount. Uh, it was capable of carrying up to 2,000 pounds of bombs, which uh, at the time it could carry two 1,000-pound bombs uh, under its uh, on its hard points. Very impressive fighter bomber when you think about it. That's two 1,000 pound bombs uh, plus the 650 cal machine guns. So, yeah, when you read the history of this aircraft, uh, you realize, you know, like I said, you always hear these stories about, you know, this was always an inferior aircraft to say, like the P 51 and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but for the most part, uh, when you do read about it, uh, you find out this aircraft really wasn't inferior uh, necessarily. It was just. Uh, it was a tricky steed to learn how to ride. Uh, and once you did, uh, it, it uh, did everything that you asked of it. Uh, and even more in several cases, like I said, 200 aces were produced out of an aircraft that was considered uh, inferior to the 109s, the Falkwolfs, the Zeros, uh, and whatnot. So with that said, uh, we've kind of gone through the history of the P-40 here. Uh, I'm gonna leave on one more note. This is kind of a what could have been maybe kind of thing. Uh, at the end of the war, uh, Curtis really took this aircraft to the ultimate edge uh, of what it could have possibly did. Uh, and the variant was the PD P-40Q. Uh, this was actually the attempt at putting an Allison two-stage two -stage supercharger in it instead of the, the single-stage supercharger. Um, this picture right here, they actually did three of them. And wow! That's a P-40. Uh, bubble canopy, two-stage supercharger on the Ellison engine. <sighs> yeah, that is a pretty plane. It looks uh, kind of similar to a uh, P-51. Um, however, this aircraft, uh, in this stage of its development, was able to uh, go from sea level to 20,000 feet in 4.8 minutes. Uh, the P-51D, 7.5 minutes. Um, top speed of this aircraft was 422 miles per hour. Uh, so yeah, they, they took the uh, infamous P-40, <laughs> put a good engine into it, uh, changed some of the, uh, like a little bit of the aerodynamics, uh, and literally built a one hell of a machine. I mean, this aircraft, uh, uh, apparently, according to the test pilots, was better than the P-51 uh, and better than most of the Germans and certainly of, of the um, 
Japanese fighters at that time. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, unfortunately, it came two years too late uh, with its design. Uh, you know, it was the end of the war. So three examples of this was were built. Um, all of them, three, I think, they ended up getting either wrecked or I think one crashed on landing, one crashed in an air race, or the engine engine burned up in an air race, and I believe I don't believe what happened to the third one. So, kind of an interesting what if about this aircraft. Uh, and obviously, it's still one of my favorite planes in the game. This is probably my first tier five plane, if I remember correctly, uh, just because of its historical um, significance uh, with the, uh, especially with the Flying Tigers. So, what do we get in game? Well, we get a uh, 650s. Uh, we get the Ellison uh, V171085. Um, yeah. Uh, it's kind of an interesting aircraft. Uh, maneuverability is not too shabby. Uh, once again, altitude performance not too shabby. Airspeed, uh, yeah, it, it is an energy fighter. If you're if you're not if you're not comfortable with that, uh, you're not going to like this aircraft. Uh, gun armament, even with the 650s, uh, these things do chew through big HP targets relatively quickly. I mean, you're not going to be one, you're not you're not a light fighter, turn and burn type aircraft, uh, but you get some uh, big HP targets like bombers, uh, GAs, um, heavy fighters like that. That's what this thing does. That's its bread and butter with this aircraft to be really successful with it. Uh, you'll watch the videos of exactly what I'm talking about when I'm playing this aircraft. Uh, yeah, this this that's the bread and butter of this aircraft um, is to play the boom and zoom type play style, stay up high, uh, take care of the big targets, uh, bombers, heavy fighters, that kind of thing. Uh, when you do get an opportunity, you can drop down on other light fighters, use that impressive speed uh, and get down there take off a good chunk of their health on your pass and then get your way out of it so um, yeah I, I'm sorry I'm babbling this is probably one of my f you know historically favorite aircraft to talk about uh, it was so impressive literally you know uh, you, you think about a flu 1938 inferior but produced an amazing number of uh, uh, of aces um, and a number of enemy airplanes shot down, uh, and just because, like you said, a lot of the pilots said it's you know, if you knew how to fly the airplane, uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty hard to beat the aircraft. Um, so yeah, it's always kind of interesting to read that part of the history part of it. Uh, run, I run uh, improved flight vector sight, engine tuning two, and of course I rubbed improved covering two, and sometimes. Uh, because of what I'm doing with it, I always like that improved covering. Otherwise, I would go. I would go with the. Uh, um, oh shit! Did this one have it? Doesn't have it on it. Sorry. Uh, yeah, just improved covering. Just because, like I said, I do play it more along the lines of a uh, heavy fighter, bomber, uh, that kind of thing. And I run, um, of course, uh, the engine guru, um, the marksman one, and this one probably eagle eye. Uh, this is probably going to get changed when I get another uh, point on that system. Um, uh, control surface trim, uh, first aid dressing, uh, fire manual fire extinguisher. This one's actually wrong. That should be a pneumatic restarter. Carry pneumatic restarter. Uh, I, I I can't believe uh, I got to start going back through some of these old planes uh, and changing these things out. Um, yeah, pneumatic restarter over uh, the. Uh, to fix your uh, wings, that kind of shit. Uh, yeah, you don't want to do that. So, uh, with that said, I got some gameplay for you to check out on this uh, aircraft, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, back with the first game in the P40. Um, <laughs> this should be interesting. Um, and I'm not terribly, and I haven't played a whole bunch uh, in these new modes, uh, just because I haven't had a whole lot of interest in it. So. I'm not terribly sure what every one of these, uh, you know, point thing is, but whatever. I'm just shooting here. I'm just here to shoot down planes. <laughs> uh, energy fighter. Get it up to altitude. This thing does well. Uh, stay above that uh, 1,800 meters or so. Get it up here in the 2,000 plus meters uh, and just use its uh, big, beautiful uh, speed and whatnot. Pick on those heavy fighters. Pick on those bombers. Um, use uh, even with the 650s now this thing is just a buzzsaw when it comes to high HP targets 
Uh, once you get in on something like the, uh, uh, I'd say like this JU88As, uh, yeah, the, those 650s will just burn right through them uh, relatively quick here. Uh, so I'm going to pick up on the two bombers that are up on top here. Um, yeah, uh, and I'm I'm, a, I'm playing this plane to its strength. Uh, I don't want to drop down too low. Uh, I'm not going to be able to deal with Spitfires. I'm not going to be able to deal with uh, zeros. Uh, it's not going to do well for me. Um, pick up the first bomber. Uh, starting to turn that uh, uh, command center blue here. And we have the other DO-17 DO uh, coming around the top here. Bert's fucking diving for the deck. Fuck you, Bert. Um, we're going to get to... I wish there was an Ernie. This would have been awesome if it would have been Bert and Ernie. Uh, pick up the command center. Uh, and I'm just going to stay here on this DO-17 until he's dead. Uh, keep working him. Yeah, there we go. And it takes a little while. I mean, so with the 50 cals, these guys, it takes a little while to burn up. But, uh, you know, heat up, I should say. Pull around. I got Justin climbing in the P-38F. Eh, I was going to kind of follow him, see what he's going to happen. But he didn't uh, turn around on me too quickly. So, sticking up around 2,000, looking for the bullfighters. Yeah, oh, there they are. Uh, pull back over. Here comes Justin again. Uh, yeah, I was, didn't really want to feel like turning away from him for too long. I figured he was going to be coming this way. Uh, that's about the time I know. Oh, jit. Spitfire. Crap. Uh, yeah. He's able to... He must have had his full... Bur he must have had his full... Uh, full... Uh, boost. Uh, otherwise, I don't know how he got up here this side. So, drop back down in here on the P other P40. Uh, we'll see if we're going to finish him off. I can't I can't turn with that Spitfire. Finish him off. Flip it back. Uh, unfortunately, the Spitfire picked me up. Picked me up at about 4,000. Um, yeah, about 4,000 on the uh, combat score right off here. So, it's looking pretty good. Uh, yeah, not, not too shabby. Um... I, uh, I really, you know, once again with this aircraft, it, it, it's kind of one of those, uh, once you get the hang of it, uh, it, it performs so well. Uh, so the Spitfire picked me up, you know, obviously, like I said, uh, he got, once he got me back to my altitude, I didn't have enough, uh, just, uh, a boost left to get back above him. Uh, so he uh, ended up picking me, dropped down, did pick up a quick target on him. Uh, so now I respawn and I'm back in here. Uh, with the P-40. Uh, this isn't always the best thing to do, but you're able to do it. And that's what's the great thing about the P-40 with the 650s. Uh, you can burn through these fighter group, uh, these bomber groups if you have to. Uh, like I said earlier in the garage, uh, um, with the uh, equipment I got on this aircraft, uh, I'm able to do this with relatively relative ease. Uh, I don't get quite beat up too bad. Uh, taking on bomber formations, um, but there is nobody else here to do it. So uh, this is my job, uh, I'm, and I'm, I jumped in here uh, as I was the closest one. So pick up the uh, next bomber, uh, see what we can do. Now we got the enemy, like, like I said, with enemy bombers, they got three of the objectives. Uh, they're up on points, so um, this should be interesting. Uh, 50 cals do, like I said, real high sustained rate of fire. Uh, you know, especially with dealing with these bombers that have such large uh, HP pools, you will heat up, especially five of them, for Christ's sakes. Um, Bull fighters coming in here, Woody. Yeah, oh, fuck you, Woody. I figured you would. Takes my, my pilot, turn around, pick up Woody as he's coming through. Unfortunately, I have somebody on my tail, and I'm kind of fucked. Uh, there's not much I can do about it. Uh, just going to stay here with the um, bow fighter. Knocks on my engine. I'm down to about nine hit points. That's all right. Pick up the bullfighter, knock him out. Got the AC coming in. Uh, my engine's gone. I have eight hit points left. Uh, and this isn't good. There's an A6M2, all human pilots, Spitfire. Uh, yeah, I'm I, about that time I was like, no, 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 no. Uh, especially since my engine just showed up. I probably should have kept the dive going because they're right on my tail. Uh, what are you going to do? So... Yeah, it's not looking good for the home team. We are down three objectives. We are losing in points. Uh, but this isn't time to one of those times to get 
to get stupid. You got to still got to play your playing to the strengths, uh, and that's exactly what this uh, what you should be doing in, every time you're playing uh, is playing to those strengths. Uh, so I spawn back in here, uh, pick up my boost again, try to get up here. Uh, I got the bullfighter coming in. Let's see if I can pick up him. Pick up the bullfighter. Uh, for some reason, my sound is a little bit off. Um, go figure. I pick up the Do 17. Yeah, there you bull, buddy. Uh, let's see. We'll, Bots don't deserve kills. Fuck you, buddy. So we pick him up. Take off two off their uh, resources, I guess you want to call it. Uh, and that's about the time I see the bomber formation come in. Luckily, there had been enough fighters jumping on it. Uh, they were able to take it out. Which works out well for us. So get back up to my 2,000 meters. Still playing the zoom and boom. Uh, I got the MiG-3 down below. Uh, and we're going to stroll on over here to... Uh, this objective here. The reason I'm doing this is you've noticed that the red planes have finally cleared out, right? Uh, no more buffet at the center objective. Uh, I have a bomber over here, and you'll see is uh, you're seeing the red um, planes start to climb here, uh, and this is what I like to see. Uh, I have the altitude performance over the boomerang, uh, and these guys are just flying straight up here. So I pick up the boomerang. He is trying to get to those bombers for all he's worth. Uh, it didn't work out. I kill him, pick it up, stay up here with the bomber, flip over. I only need, oh, yeah, uh, I got set on fire. Go figure. Uh, I only need uh, that one kill to finish it off. Uh, back down, engine's damaged. Um, I got a bunch of shit on my tail here. That's all right. Uh, we will prevail. <laughs> uh, the bullfighter somehow picks me up. Hey, it happens, it happens, right? Uh, so now we have the center objective. Uh, waited long enough for them guys to clear out. Now they're coming back. Um, and I am just getting ready to spawn back in here with uh, about 15 seconds here. And I'm looking, I'm not terribly sure. Uh, now with the bomber command up, uh, they have doesn't seem to have any interest in uh, really going after them bombers. And we'll see here shortly how that turns out for them. Um, respawn, um, pick up a bowfighter that's coming over here, figure out, oh, yeah, well, he is AFK. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick pass at him, pick up some damage, and drop over and come back up around on behind um, all these uh, bombers that are flying currently toward my uh, Air Force base. Now, we just flipped another objective, uh, so we're back up to uh, three versus two. Um, but these guys cannot get through. We don't want to lose any more <laughs> of these objectives if we don't have to. Um, drop off the second bomber. And you know, at this point, you can notice how quickly uh, my 50 cals are heating up. I, I'm not really giving them a whole lot of time to cool off um, in between. But once again, you're shooting down five bombers. Uh, so yeah, even 50 cals are going to heat up to the point where... Uh, they're going to be in the red. So pull over. One another bomber. Let's see here. I'm just letting it, just letting it get down to the bottom of the white. Uh, unfortunately, we're so close to this, uh, the objective. I want to get him before he completely drops his bombs. Um, and there yeah, we got him. Uh, unfortunately, by the time I finish him off, this guy's right here. Uh, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, not going to be able to kill him. He already dropped his bombs. So now I'm just kind of like, eh, eh. There you go. You're on fire. Fuck you. Bye-bye. Not going to hang around. Um, I'm going to start strolling back towards center. Uh, now we've flipped the uh, resources back the other way. Uh, we got the four objectives. I got the bow fighter down below. I got the MiG-3 got, just got nailed. Uh, and it's looking pretty good for the home team, finally. Um... Once again, like I said, play, your, play this to its strength, uh, which is, of course, as a, uh, air, you know, more of a um, uh, energy fighter, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm going to pick up, nope, didn't pick it up, and we pick up the second and to the, our last objective, uh, and now it's just uh, pretty much cleaning everything up here. Uh, they only have three, apparently three objectives, or three uh, resources left, uh, and I'm going to see if I can get back over here to get a few more kills. Sadly, it doesn't work out, uh, and post a pretty decent 13,000 
combat points. So, one more game for you guys. Uh, to see. All right, guys, back with the second game in the P40. Uh, I'm playing with CAD in the BF109. Uh, both energy fighters, and yeah. And we are up against a flight of heavies. And a couple uh, turn and burn aircraft. So, <sighs> gonna go south. And you know what? He's got a uh, the BF 109 has got a better altitude performance than this aircraft does. But they're you know pretty similar play styles. You know, they he actually has cannons, so he is he uh, does a little bit better of the zoom and boom. Um, climb, climb, climb. Get up there around 2,000 meters and wait for your first uh, lovely heavy fighter. And that's the great thing about energy fighters. You have a pretty good shot uh, to be able to take out uh, objectives by yourself because you have the ability to get up here high, uh, deal with heavy fighters, and then work your way down to the bottom. Um, so me and Cad, once again, thought about trading paint, but we didn't do it. <laughs> so pick up the other bow fighter. Uh, yeah, right into the vertical. There you are, buddy. Finish him off. Flip over. And we're looking for any stalled out boomerangs. Boomerang can't get up here. He's fucked. Uh, we're just going to drop down in here. Pick up the uh, objective. And now we're going to go back to center. Um, you know, it, it, it does have good speed. You know, that, that's the great thing also about it is you, you can get from point A to point B relatively quickly. Uh, you know, that, that's always been its, um, you know, altitude, performance, um, speed definitely helps this plane so got the bullfighters up high again here uh, you know and that that's also kind of sucks when with 50 gals is your, your your range is only about 500 meters um, that's the earliest you can start uh, really starting uh, you know getting damage but you know really effective range is probably excuse me closer to 300 meters before you can start getting, you know, all 650s on there. So we pick up the second objective. We got the airport in the middle, uh, airfield in the middle, and of course uh, the garrison. They have two objectives. Uh, it's sitting pretty decent here. We're going to pick up the HE 112. Uh, we'll knock that off quick. Back over the top. Um, looking for uh, A6M1. So I noticed the Phantom uh, running. Uh, biplanes. Yeah, biplanes. Bye bye, biplane. Uh, pick up the third objective. Yeah, ew, we're gonna have to slow down to uh, kill him. Uh, now you see me dropping down, uh, you know, getting in somewhat of a dogfight here, uh, which is fine. You can do that with these high altitude planes, uh, if, if, if of course you have enough help. And there's plenty of help here. Uh, I'm not worried about getting into a turn and burn with a, uh, you know, like a zero or something like that, uh, just to. Uh, you know, uh, once you get into the, the turn fight with those fighters, you have plenty of help uh, to deal with them. So pick back up over here. Uh, we got the XFL, a human pilot, and of course an HE-112. Let's see if I can pick up the uh, uh, the human pilot. Hey, there you are, buddy. So, yeah, burn right through that. Uh, we're gonna pull down here on the HE-112. Uh, he's actually a pretty good energy fighter himself. Uh, Gad and I. Uh, we're going to attempt to uh, kill this plane together, uh, but I didn't want to shoot it full of holes. <laughs> That's what happens when you're running in a fight together uh, and you're playing very similar planes. Uh, you get a lot of this, uh, you know, generally on target with each other. Uh, so we got uh, F2A coming through here. I'm going to pick him up, finish him off, turn around, and I got the A6M coming in here, put a couple shells into him. I can't make the turn, so I'm just going to go right on through and pick up the other A6M1. Uh, he's kind of fucked. Uh, left, right, up, down, that kind of thing. So, leave him. Come back around here. They pick up the Phantom and the other A6M. Uh, this A6M is still running. Pick him up. Get our first Raptor duo of the night. Uh, we had a pretty good night. This is actually to the point where we thought we broke the system. Uh, we'd won several games in a row, uh, and they were all just fucking routes. I mean, there wasn't even a funny, it wasn't even funny, actually. Um, 
flying just the P-40 and the BF-109. Coming on the bomber, uh, fire hose engaged. Uh, this thing just burns through big HP, HP targets uh, if you can get on them and stay on them. Um, we've pretty much sat here on the center buffet uh, and they're feeding it uh, left and right to us. So, got the BF-110, he runs through here. Oh, I'm gonna drop down on him. Uh, there you go, buddy. There's not much you can do. You can't outrun this plane. Finish him off. Um, back up a little bit here. We're gonna see if we can get some more altitude. Uh, flip over. Keep my uh, airspeed up. Pick up the uh, A6M coming through here. E yeah. Uh, brake, brake, uh, flaps, uh, and just keep the nose pointed on them. Uh, the baddies. Uh, we got the other Fantone over here again and he is getting right on the tail so I'm hoping to pick his up before uh, he kills my uh, human pilot. So uh, it's in about 9500 combat points and uh, I decided about this point to leave. I probably should have just stayed because there were way more targets over here. I thought maybe I'd be cheeky fucking pick up another objective. Uh, we get the tip of the spear between the two of us uh, yeah, we were both over 10,000 combat points pretty easily. Well, we got Lords of the Sky, too, now. Um, heading to the top here, I think he ended up with, like, 16 kills, and I had 10 or 11 or some shit like that. So, yeah, we did a pretty good game on these guys. So, that was a nice, quick, <laughs> nice little... All right, guys, back with the last of the... Uh, P40 videos um, running uh, once again with CAD and his BF-109. If you guys have figured out, he fucking loves that plane. I'm not positive, but I think it might be an unhealthy relationship. Oh, and to let you guys know, he is a 100% American. He lives in Virginia. I was confused by the accent, so he doesn't really hate America. Um, just to let you know, he, 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 he informed me right off the bat that I was... Uh, confused and uh, he really is an American uh, so we pull over here um, kind of difficult I thought we would have some GAs come this way but apparently they fucking don't care uh, about taking this objective so we just pull in here on the bowfighter uh, and between the two of us with this amount of firepower uh, these bowfighters uh, really don't have much chance <laughs> Jesus so quickly we turn that so don't have the objective uh, obviously without any ground targets being destroyed we're gonna head back over here to center uh, they almost got the uh, they almost got the uh, uh, airfield uh, so we just have uh, Bob Marley uh, wait I thought he was dead apparently he flies world of warplanes uh, f pick him off um, we got some inbound fighters here. Uh, we almost got the, the center objective is going to be sitting yeah, about halfway. Once again, we don't have the uh, ground attack planes here like we wish we did. Uh, we're just going to drop down in here on the I-17. And we're going to pick him up uh, as he comes through. Pick him up. Flip up and over. I got an enemy on my tail. Uh, oh, there's the P-36. Let's see what we can do. Uh, CAD finishes them off. Uh, we ended up with the uh, objective. Flip up and over. Oh, damn. F2A wants to go head to head. He's got bombs. He looked like he was uh, on a mission to bomb something. Uh, flip back around. Uh, like I said, I don't mind getting into these uh, fights like this because I have plenty of help. Uh, typically, no. If I saw something like that, it would turn and especially if it's a maneuverable fighter, say like a, a zero or whatever, uh, the P-40 is able to uh, usually get away. Uh, if not, if you get the boost, you can boost up and uh, uh, usually get away from these um, these turn and burn type aircraft. Find out my uh, counterpart, the other P-40. Flip around. Ew, there we go. Finish him off. And we got the BF-110 coming in here. We're going to boost and see if we can get some speed to catch him before he gets away on us. Oh, uh, there we go. Slowly but surely, we're going to pick him off. Pick off the BF-110E. Yeah. Um, this isn't looking good for the home team. This is literally 
uh, what our most of our night was in the uh, uh, world of warplanes. Uh, nothing more than a <laughs> absolute shit show of, uh, yeah, a lot of these games weren't even close. To a certain degree, they weren't almost any fun, but hey, what do you, you can't really complain. So picks up the HE 112, pick up our third objective. Uh, he goes nose to nose, flip up and over. Uh, I'm a little lower than I really want to be here. I should be up around 2,000 meters, uh, but it didn't work out that way. So pick up the HE 112. I got a guy that's kind of pecking at me here. Uh, yeah, no, no, that ain't gonna work here. Pick over here, pick up the P 36, or I'm sorry, the F 2A. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if we can pick him up before he gets away. Uh, slowly but surely. Come on, buddy. Where you at? Pick up the F2A. Yep, he's running. Uh, finish him off. And now we got a whole f mass of red bleeding into the center. That's right, boys. Let's feed the buffet. So pick up the P36. Kirby, you fuck. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that was Kirby. Looks like there's a BF1 day. It looked like it was the BF-110 uh, something something. Starts with a K. Not sure. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Mekaslav. Oh, Keegan. No. Kabbalah. 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 Uh, yeah, I think he was the one that put the uh, initial hurt on me as he came through. So we're sitting at three, objecti or three objectives to their one. Uh, it's not looking good for the red team. Uh, apparently they missed the, uh, the 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 memo, <laughs> but then again it is hard once you get down uh, to really come back from this. Pull up, we got the I-17 coming through here. Uh, they've been dicking around over here on this uh, over here on this uh, objective for a while, so I'm gonna we're gonna come over here and try to finish it off. Uh, we started out earlier. Uh, and it didn't work out so hot for us because we only had the two bow fighters and no defense fighters. So back up. Uh, fuck off, man. Um, the Blindum comes roaring in from, you know, stealth mode. Uh, but that's all right, buddy. You can't do a whole lot uh, against the P-40. Uh, unless, of course, you damage my tail. Uh, then I can't quite get down on you. Finish him off. Let's put about 7,000 combat points. See if we can finish off the Kenneth. Uh, Kenneth is climbing uh, P-38F. That's a, that's a hell of a <laughs> that's a hell of a hell of a take on when you go up against a P-38F in your uh, P-36. Ah, uh, Kabbalah, you fuck. We're gonna get him this time though. So he comes through, start pummeling him with the 50 cal's high fire hose all over that shit. Uh, finally, come on, buddy, come on, buddy. Where are you at? Oh, finish him off. Cad finishes him off. Uh, we're sitting at 66 to 10. Yeah, it's not going too well for the home team. Uh, I-17 is coming in here. Mekoslev, Makoslev. Uh, he's going to go one-on-one -on -one with the BF-109. Usually not a good experience. Uh, but leaves CAD leaves me a chance to finish him off as he comes through. And what do we got over here? We got the HE-112 is back. Oh, yeah, one way or another. And you know, a lot of times you see me firing a little soon. That's because I usually like to, to uh, get that. So, um, yeah, 10,000 combat points. We'll see you guys later.